brothers and sisters, do you know that we are spirit beings? And if you are spirit beings, how are we going to control our flesh? So today I'm going to tell you how we can master our ego or the flesh or the desires of the body and finally become free. Are you really struggling with your flesh and you say, ah, Every day you're saying, this is the last bottle. I don't want to drink again. I'm done with it. But then again, you find yourself uh, holding the, <laughs> the beer bottle 5 p.m. in the evening. Somebody else says, oh, this is the last time I'm fornicating. Then you find yourself there and you ask yourself, why? How am I going to master this? How am I going to stop this thing? Now, this one I'm going to give you. Uh, is going to be a very interesting teaching so that you can know how you can master your body, your flesh, your ego, your desires of the flesh. Remember, as we are spirit beings and what we see here, the body, is just, uh, it's just uh, a dust. It's just some avatar of some sort that God is supposed to be dwelling in and using it for his own you know, accomplishments. But then why are we using it for evil? Why are we using it for other different things? You see, ego... Different cultures, they call it different ways. And it's only that they do not understand is the same thing. For example, Buddhists, they call it the monkey bird. Spiritualists, they call it the lower self. Scientists, they call it the reptilian brain or the basal ganglia. Religious people call it the devil. Oh, I'm struggling with the devil. Oh, Satan, this, Satan, this, my, my friend. <laughs> it's just the same thing, but uh, different names. So the ego is an aspect of you. It's an aspect of you, put that in your mind, which is locked into this physical plane, all right? That is the five physical senses. That is a sight, hearing, tasting, touching, or smelling. So everything which is uh, in this third dimensional uh, platform or plane, which we call flesh or whatever, is what we call the ego. And the fourth dimension is the spirit man. And that's why the spirit man is always fighting with the with the natural man. <laughs> you see, there's a problem here. And uh, the ego is the vehicle of the spirit. You have to understand. And um, you're supposed to be God's vessel. Now, this ego, when you talk about it, it can sometimes get out of control. This flesh gets out of control. You don't know how to control it. Just like an animal. All right? You see, the Bible says man is a beast. Just like an animal. Sometimes you, you need to tame your ego. You need to tame your flesh. Otherwise, it will tame you instead. So now, how do you master your ego? I'm going to uh, give you a few points. Number one is through meditation. Meditation is very, 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 very important. Now, what is meditation? Meditation is what you put your mind or what you focus on. Now, the Bible tells us meditate upon the word of God day and night. But do we meditate upon the word of God? Anytime we try to focus on something, we try to focus, we always get distractions left, right, and center. Because why? <laughs> you have to understand, this, these many things which are happening around us in these five senses, they are like a type of drug. For example, according to experts, an average person uh, sees between 4,000 to 10,000 adverts in a day. They are running left, right, and center, especially people who use smartphones. And... Uh, you're able to get 40 notifications and above in a day. So think about the stimulation. It's like a drug, which is how will you focus? How will you meditate? All right? So if you try to meditate, you always, your body always tries to twitch, you know, to, tries to twitch and tells you, okay, check, there's a notification. Check. Maybe somebody's calling. Check. So how do you get out of this? Meditate. And how do you do this? Try every day sitting for about 10 to 20 minutes, just basically doing nothing, focusing, close your eyes if it is possible, close your eyes and think within, go inside, get inside, stop going from the outside, get inside for 10, 20 minutes every day. And this will be like you're suppressing the flesh in, in some way and you are going to get more control over your flesh. This is why the Bible tells us meditate upon the word of God daily. Not just to read. Reading is another thing. But meditating, do you sit down and think? That word of God, yes. God said this, this. Think from within and you, you master it. All right? When you master it, my friend, you'll be a different person. Remember the Bible says that meditation is, 
He's a type of beginning to God. Remember Psalms 46 verse 10. He says, be still. Be still and know that I am God. How are you going to know he's God if you're not still? Something else, number two, is called intermittent fasting. Now, you've always heard the Bible talking about fasting, fasting, fasting. People just think fasting is just any other thing. How is fasting connected with spirituality? You see, fasting allows you to deprive the ego, all right, of his major desires. One of the major desires, which is eating. You see, when <laughs> eating is a, is a satisfying thing. But when you deny the body, you're able to focus much, all right? And uh, your ego wants to be satisfied. Your flesh wants to be satisfied. And when you, you, you are the one who is supposed to be controlling it. You're supposed to tell your body, no, this is enough. I've taken enough meat. I've taken enough this. I've taken enough. You are the one who is supposed to control the flesh, not the flesh controlling you. So how are you going to tame this flesh? Try fasting. And um, if you can give your body basic instructions and it listens, then... That's where controlling the ego begins, you see? And uh, this is why fasting is considered spiritual because you connect to the soul and spirit when you deny the flesh, you understand? And also fasting, remember, it helps you to reduce the brain fog and helps in cognition for you to understand much better. Another point is silence. How many times do you get to be silent? Are you yapping and yapping all the time? Are you ever silent? Silence is the way to God. Remember what I just read to you, that uh, the Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Unless you're still, how are you going to know and understand God? All right? We always want to hear our own voices. Think about the monks out there. Why do you think monks are always silent in some place? Because they want to internalize from within. Think about even rich people. Rich people, why do they live in silent places? Have you ever found a rich person who is always interested with a lot of noisy areas? They always say money loves silence. But you'll find poor people, they always love noise. If you want to know a poor person, his house is full of gadgets and a lot of noise. And the places that he even goes on holiday and does his things is always noise. Why? Because silence has some aspect of connecting to the spirit, to the soul. So start being silent. At least find some time and just be silent for a little while and you will see a big, big difference of how you can master your flesh. And something else is um, establish your word as law. How many people say things which they don't even mean? Remember the Bible says, let your yea be yea and nay be nay. You say one thing, you promise yourself by 7 a.m. I'm going to wake up. Th that is what your mind has said. But what about the flesh? Are they in sync? Do you really wake up at 7 a.m.? So let your word be what you've said. Let your yea be yea and nay be nay. Whatever you have decided, let it synchronize with the flesh. Because the moment you break the trust between your mind and your body, then that makes your goal of being able to control your reality very difficult. All right? So we understand that the mind is always used to getting away with so many empty promises but for you to control reality that needs to stop okay so anything that you plan must become a law you say i'm going to call my mom at 4 p.m call her you say that uh, i'm going to change my dress code from next week change it you say that i'm going to wake up early wake up early i'm going to the gym go to the gym and make it a law all right and uh, don't just plan anything if you do not intend to keep it. And that way, you're going to master your flesh. You're going to master your ego, your desires of the flesh. Because the flesh is always trying to fight us. Always trying to fight what the mind wants. Remember Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 7, he kept on saying, What I want to do, I don't do it. But what I don't want to do is what I do. What is this thing which is fighting me? It is the flesh. So how are you going to fight that flesh? It is by keeping these things that I've told you. Meditate. Be silent. Meditate. Be silent. Have your word be as law. And the other thing, fasting. Fasting helps you keep your body in control. My friend, I hope this one will finally help you to get set free. Because the Bible is very real. And it has always taught us the things that we need to hear. And God is always real when you put these things in there.